But then there's a camera crew, and then there's some ghosts, and then there are some demons, and then Lucifer <laughs> rises from hell, and Jesus descends from heaven, and rapture and ra- rapture <laughs> house. <laughs> Welcome to the Fear Fiction Podcast. Today, on this rainy occasion, artist, lesbian, and rain dumper Chelsea wants to read and critique a story that's actually scary, while illiterate writer, lesbian, and bone collector Dead Palette wants to direct a Christian rapture film that's straight to DVD. Today's episode is about a different kind of stalker, the bad kind that stalks people like you don't want. Kick it to the cold open past DP. Chelsea, you have a $20 million budget to make a horror film. What? Tell me what happens. Oh, there's thunder. There is thunder, and it is very there's rainy. There's thunder, outside. and it is what you're saying. It's rainy outside. Right, we're setting yeah, the scene. Yeah, we're setting the scene. You're in a old Victorian-style house. Okay. That uh, we get to rent out for, like, what, $5,000, maybe? So that's... Five- <laughs> I don't know. For a day, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Um, which leaves me with Break 13. down your budget. Let me see it right. itemized. Right, exactly. And the premise is that there are a bunch of, you know, like, teenagers having a slumber party. Uh, 18. 18, yep. Oh, 18 or 19-year-olds. Just graduated college. Okay. Just graduated 18, 19-year-olds. Just graduated college. Okay. Yes. <laughs> They're really smart. <laughs> this is checking out so far. So, like, they're, they're about to have, like, a slumber party in this house that they just broke into. Okay. And they hear a noise, so they run and they hide, right? What is the noise, Chelsea? Turns out there is a film crew there to, like, document ghost yeah, activities. Yeah, to, sh- to shoot the movie, yes. Yeah, there's a film movie. crew there. No, no. So, there's a film film crew there to document, like, a bunch of ghost shit. It's like a ghost hunter show. And okay. the teenagers didn't know that the ghost hunters were coming, right? Okay. So... Ghost hunters start their shit, and the teenagers are like, what if we just fuck with them? And the whole Ooh. movie is just those, the film crew getting so scared that they shit themselves, and it turns out it's just these poor teenagers. What if that's the first 30 minutes of the movie? The first 15, we meet the teens, they're breaking in, they're, you know, doing over-the-pants stuff. Mm. Because they haven't gotten that far yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, because they're, one of them has. One of them has. But the rest of them are like... And it's one of those things where we're, we're really unclear on their age. They they could be middle schoolers, high schoolers, college age, or post-grad. <laughs> right. They could be getting their PhDs. <laughs> they could be getting their PhD. I'm 20, I'm 20 already, and uh, I just feel like my life is passing me by. I only have three PhDs, and I'm just not doing <laughs> right, exactly. I just keep going back to school because I can't decide what I want to do with my life. But like, I went to high school when I was fourteen because I'm stupidly smart. The, the, that does seem to be the attitude that a lot of young people have of just like I can't. I'm eighteen. I haven't lost my virginity. My life is over. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, you know, at that point, you've you've lived eighteen years, and yeah, at that point, you, you know, won't. you you don't have a concept of what a hundred years is if you make it to that. So no, and uh, you're. I do find me personally that the older I get, the higher my chances of the higher my capacity for enjoyment is. Like mm-hmm. when you're a baby, you are either crying or you got mommy's pee pee pee. Pee-pee. Yeah, you have uh-huh. mommy's pee pee's in your mouth. <laughs> Weird Freudian slip. You have mom's TT. I was trying to find a way to, way to say tatas. T- tatas. Tatas. Say, trying to find a weird boob word. Anyway, because anyway. the weirder your boob word is, the funnier it is. Right. Anyway, I was trying to find, uh, you, you know, you're, you're a baby and you, you're either crying or you're happy. Well, because, like, you're either having the best time of your life or the very worst time of your life. And then you... You don't have any mediums to compare it to when you're, like, a little tot. If you're a kid and everything is going right, then what you're dealing with is, you know, I get to play video games and I got to do schoolwork and my mind is naturally not built for doing schoolwork. Right. So there's that issue. So, so you're kind of bored, but at the same time, you can enjoy stuff. And then right as you're getting a handle on that, right as you're getting accustomed to schoolwork, life throws puberty at you. Sends it all into disarray, and that screws you up for so many years. And then years. you end up like in a school with two hundred other things that are also going through the same exact thing you're going through. Yes, two hundred entities. Yeah. 
I, 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 I feel like I feel like middle schoolers might as well be hell spawn because like you're going through puberty, but you haven't. Most of them haven't really developed that part of the brain that deals with empathy yet. Yeah. So like it's just a bunch of little psychopaths stuck in the same building together. Yeah, but that's that's the issue. Is I I remember in high school. I had people say, man, I hate this. I want to go back to middle school when things were simple. It's like, I don't. I am enjoying this. I'm, you know, I have more brain now. And I feel like the older I get, the more brain I have, the higher my ability to be happy is. I've never, I've, I've always been lucky in that I got good brain chemicals. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm just naturally happy. You less so, but like still, we're, we're generally happy people. I feel like the older I get the higher my capacity for happiness is. Okay. I don't know, but how do you feel about that? Um, I mean, like, I feel like the older I get, the more I realize that, like, things are not as bad as my gut assumption. True. Um, because I have, I have more experience to draw on, whereas, like, as a child, I only really had, like, negative experiences to draw on, and I'm like, life is the worst, why was I born? Well, that's, that's the interesting <laughs> thing, is the older you get, the more you are able to look back and say like, oh man, this this thing that's happening to me right now sucks, but it's literally, you know, depending on the size of the thing, it's not going to matter five minutes from now. Right. It's not going to matter ten minutes, like if it's, if it's going to matter five minutes from now, you can say like, well, is it going to matter an hour from now? Mm -hmm. Is it going to matter a day from now? Is it going to matter a week from now? The older right. you get, and if you just build in that mindset of like, oh, I don't think about those things very often. Right. You still are going to think about all the embarrassing shit you've ever done. I mean, that haunts you until you die. And that's for, that's for a reason, because you need that. Right, because you need to not repeat those embarrassing things. Yeah, and so the older I get, the more that I look back on those embarrassing things, the more that I'm just like, oh, I'm not even really embarrassed by that, because I know how stupid I was, because I was just a baby, and, you know, so, so it doesn't matter. Right. It's um that, that classic thing of, like, oh, my God, I pissed my pants in class, and now my life is over. Right. And then, like, and in the moment, and, like, even you say that, you're like, yeah, that's super fucking embarrassing, bro. And then, like, in retrospect, it's like, not really, because you're a dumb... And you're not you think you're potty trained and you don't you think you're you're gaining intelligence but it's happening at a very slow rate right it's just the the intelligence you are doubling your intelligence pool but it's so tiny yeah it's so tiny that it doesn't <laughs> oh the thunder oh the lightning it's the a, pizzazz the pizzazz <laughs> uh, Elias edit out all thunder somehow Leave it in. Leave, Leave in the pizzazz. Leave it. <laughs> Throw some more pizzazz in. Why not? Talk it. Yeah, do it. So we're in this um, uh, haunted house. Right. And so here, here's my pitch. We have them going through the house for the first 15 minutes, doing over the pants stuff. And, uh, you know, maybe one of them has gone further, but now their new partner doesn't want to go that far. It's like, but my penis needs to be touched. And exactly like that. That is the exact <laughs> phrase. <laughs> it's, just, it's just baby cakes. It's just baby cakes. My penis needs touch. It's Italian baby cakes for some reason. Okay. It's copyright. Copyright um, is why it's Italian. So that's happening, and then the film crew shows up. They're kind of freaked out by it, and the film crew was like, "What?" Are we, what the the stu the kids are like, "What is that?" And then the film crew are like, "What is that?" And, um, and they're all referring to the penis. They're all referring to the penis. <laughs> we can't show this haunted penis on our show, on our television show. <laughs> this is even a penis. I don't know what the fuck it is. Uh, so they're they're fucking with them for the next 15 minutes. Okay. okay. They have this like little time when they're when they're discovering when the students discover the film crew, but the film crew doesn't discover them. Okay. And what happens is there is they start pranking them and then the real ghosts show up. Okay. And starts pranking all of them. And then starts pranking all of them. And then maybe there's another twist. What what would another twist on top of that? So we got the students they discover the film crew. The film crew is freaked out, and they're like, oh, my God. The film crew's happy because right. they're getting freaked out, but they're like, oh, my God, this place is really haunted. We're right. And, you know, you have your person in the film crew that's like, man, this is a fraud, and I'm only in it for the money. And then the person's like, no, this is real. What are you talking about? Right. And they're like, we need to get rid of this guy. He's not a true believer in all of this. Oh, look, this is real. No, nah, man, that's totally fake, and right. you guys are just doing that to get a real reaction. And so you have that going on. And then they discover each other, and it's a big blow-up, and it's really funny. And then 
And then uh, demons show up. No, ghosts. You ghosts. say ghosts. Ghosts. Which we'll go with I, ghosts. Think, I think the twist should be like, okay, so the film crew is getting pranked by the students, and then the students are starting to get pranked by the ghosts, and then the ghosts start getting pranked by Satan. <laughs> and the ghosts have been there for a few hundred years, and they don't know why they haven't moved on. And then Satan shows up to just do something? I don't know. I don't know. Satan's just like, hey, guys. Who wants to be dragged to hell with me? I got a killer party going on. I got, like, a few ghost cakes. And then G- Jesus is reborn and comes down from heaven to slay Satan. No. No, they start smooching. They start smooching? They start smooching with their mouths. What it, so, so Lucifer rises up from hell with the sword of the believer, of, of the, the, the sword of the person cast out of heaven. And then Jesus descends... Uh, with the the sword of uh, the non-believers to to let them know that he is real and that he has come, and they get into an epic battle and they stab each other and they re-die, and then everything outside of the house is an apocalypse. Okay. And then everybody inside the house is safe mm-hmm. and uh, for for now, but they have to figure out what they're going to do because outside of this house where there's this cosmic force of Lucifer and Jesus fighting. Right. Outside of that, because of their swords clashing together, that is creating a that created a protective field. Everything else is Armageddon. I was going to say Ragnarok. But what's Christian Ragnarok again? <laughs> the Rapture. The Rapture. <laughs> yes. The Rapture and Iraq. And you know, I just want to clarify and make sure that we're. And on we the can same call page. the movie Rapture House. Yeah, there we go. And it can be shown as a boner comedy. <laughs> this summer, <laughs> Rapture House. Rapture House. And it's just set. It's we sell it to them. Yeah. Like it's a boner comedy. Right. Where it's a bunch of kids, you know, doing whippets and doing snort balls right. at the at the. They're going to break in and they're going to make this a fun. Time. And they're going to have a great time in Rapture House. And then it turns out it's just like um, Christian propaganda. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Fuck it. We- weird, like Adventist yeah. <laughs> Christian propaganda. <laughs> d- d- what's the Dominion? Dominionist? Yeah, the, Maybe. the, 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 the ones that, wanna, that, that believe that the Rapture is going to come. Um, I mean, I, I know Baptists that believe that the rapture is a legitimate thing. So. Well, I, I, I know they all believe that, but like, there are ones that are like, yeah, we nobody knows the day or time. And then there's the ones that are like, it's tomorrow, my dude. Well, I mean, my family thought it was going to happen in 2012. And then it fucking didn't. Your family <laughs> are not the most intelligent bulbs <laughs> In the shed. When I say family, I mean my extended family. But yes. But yes. You're not incorrect on that one. I am not. What What was the clarification? Oh, um, by swords, you actually mean their penises, right? They're fucking. Yeah. Okay. They're, this no, is... they're having a dick battle. So they come. They come down from heaven. So so we get Lucifer coming up. And they from have hell. like tattoos on their dicks that say like "Sword of Jesus," "Sword of." <laughs> So, so Lucifer comes up from hell, and it's Ryan Gosling. Oh, yeah. And he's in... I don't think you could afford that on a on your budget, though. You gotta get knockoff Ryan Gosling. Probably. Probably. Or it could just be CGI. He's not... Ooh. He doesn't need to be there. So, he shows up, and he's in red robes, dark red robes with black accents, mm-hmm. and, and Jesus comes down, and he's in these pure white and gold robes, and it's like, we know what we need to do. And they strip off the roads and then they have uh, wrestling, amateur wrestling leotards on. <laughs> yes. But, the, but the, penis, yes. the penis is cut out. Okay. So, so, so the penis is just dangling. Yeah, it's just okay. dangling. And like uh, uh, instantly upon ripping it off, you can see that they are flaccid. But before the robes even hit the floor, their penis is erect. Okay. Just rapid erection. Yes. And they just go at it. Yeah. Not even, and not touching, just their dicks. Okay. And they're like, they're rubbing their bodies up against each other, but they're not using arms. It's like, it's like boxing where you can't kick. Right, but you can't use your arms. You can't use your arms. You just got to use the dick. They're just like holding them behind their heads. Yes. Yeah. And you can kind of use your thighs, you know, you can kind of use your knee a little bit to get like an advantage or what, but that's it. Okay. And that's your movie. Rapture House. (laughs) Rated PG. Rated PG. (laughs) What's going to happen when a group of <laughs> horny middle school doctorate degrees show up? PhDs. PhDs show up 
to a to a house in the middle of nowhere. But then there's a camera crew, and then there's some ghosts, and then there are some demons, and then Lucifer <laughs> rises from hell, and Jesus descends from heaven and rapture and ra- rapture house. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, exactly. Jesus. <laughs> not rated. It, it, it ends up not being rated because it's a, a Christian film that doesn't get shown in any movie theater. It's just yeah. some guy that has 40 million, 20 million, whatever the number I said was. It, it's direct to home video mm-hmm. pipeline. Part of the God is not dead cinematic universe. There you go. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. There's a reference for you. Uh, remember God is not dead. Remember that? Remember the atheist college professor? <laughs> so, so we're going to read 091710. That's a date. So this happened. This story is entitled September 17th, 2010. Well, we don't know if it's 2010, 1910, 1810. Well, this was before the end of the world in 2012. Okay. We know that. All right. So maybe this story is also about the rapture. See, that's a perfect transition. There was a transition the entire time, gang. You just didn't know. It it just presented itself. It just presented itself. I remember reading this forever ago. I I remember that there is a laptop. That's all that I remember. And some some this is like a sort of like a detective story, kind of like a mystery more than anything else from what I remember. Okay. It is labeled because of course it's labeled a uh, computer net computer net computer net oh uh, the computer net all oh, the good old computer net information highway it's labeled computer and internet mental illness and it is a pasta of the month it is a suggested reading on the oh, creepy is that pasta what that means? Mukia. yes okay so it does not mean play of the month I thought it was just like pot M, and it's just like, well, what what does pot M refer to? Is it a certain kind of pot and pan? Pot marijuana. Pot, there we go. <laughs> Remember to like and subscribe if you like pot marijuana, <laughs> and tell me how many pot marijuanas you've had today. How many have you drank? How many, you know, the fact that there is drinkable weed now, I love living in the time we're living in. <laughs> it's a strange time. It's a time. strange time. It's very strange. It's weird that, like, well, I guess uh, there's got to be there's got to be injectable marijuana somewhere, right? I don't know. Somebody's got to do injectable. I mean, marijuana. I know that there are drugs that are injectable, but sure. I can't remember which ones are qualify under that on off the top of my head. If there's any drug addicts and or scientists in the comments, let me know if you can inject marijuana. <laughs> How that would work? How would that work? <laughs> that's a, that's a funny that's a really funny idea to me though of just like you know when you think of injectable drugs you think of like heroin you think of like oh this person's a drug addict they have a huge problem and when you think of somebody that like does marijuana you're just like oh they're just they just like doing weed maybe they're a pothead you know it's it's so it's so trivial right mm-hmm. I love the idea of just the the extreme method of needing to inject but you're just doing it with. <laughs> A really benign thing like weed is is just pure comedy to me. I need to inject pure Benadryl into my yes, veins. injectable Benadryl. <laughs> Give me the injectable bennies. <laughs> injectable Benny here. <laughs> Are you having an allergic reaction? Injectable Benny here. Do you need to take a nap like right fucking now? <laughs> Do you Don't have- take too much. You will have hallucinations. I have never gotten to that point, and I've I've had a lot of Benadryl. I haven't either, honestly. You you can. Although uh, my doctor did put me on like a drug one time to help me with with a, a medical related thing that made me like hallucinate cat girl shadows on the wall. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that was fun. That was a fun time. And you and you were telling me that you had these nightmares, and then you were also like, yeah, but it was kind of hot because they were cat girls. They were shadow I, I demons. I do like cat girls. They were shadow demons, and I wasn't asleep. I was very much awake when I saw this happen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, a night terror then, a night terror. Anyway, we're going to read September seventeenth, two thousand and ten. I remember thinking that the story is mediocre, but I know that it has things going on. Okay. I don't want to call your opinion too much, but you did say the next episode we do, we should try and read something that's less trolly and might legitimately be scary. Right. I don't know if I've ever read this. It's not ringing a bell, but I have a tendency to forget I've read something until I'm about halfway through it. True. So. True. 
A couple of months ago, I began my classes in Chico, Chico State University. Chico. Bonnie and Chica. As I <laughs> was preparing for my freshman year, I was able to find everything that I needed except for a laptop. I'm not exactly very good at letting a dollar go for something, especially when I could get that something for less. All right, so cheap. Cheapskate, yeah. It could be cheapskate, could just be frugal. Frugal. I mean, yeah. you are a college student. That's that's kind of a thing. Yeah, you're, you're dropping like $500 on a textbook, you know? Yeah, you're. that's what you're dropping it on. You're not dropping it on weed and speed balls and fucking horse tranquilizers. And What's a speed ball? I'm, Is that like a pool? So you get cool thing. So it's amphetamines, but you you put them into a mixture of marshmallows and butter. What? And so it's a so you get all of the amphetamine pills, and then you just turn it into a Rice Krispie treat speed, and you just take a bite of it. What the fuck? This is not a real thing, Chelsea. Oh. This is... You had me going. I thought it was. You could have kept going with that, and I would have just been like, what the fuck? People are so creative with how they uh, alter their minds. I feel like if you're taking pills, and you're exceeding two of any hard narcotic pill, you probably need to seek help. Maybe. <laughs> Immediately, because you're on a slippery slope, buddy. Because, boy, boy, those uh, those opiates are not to be trifled with. No. Uh, I, I scored the internet. Scoured? Scoured. Score. Score. Scorched. Score one. I scorched the internet for good deals on laptops, finding that none suited my frugal habits. Classes were only two weeks away, and I was becoming desperate for a computer. Several days later, I saw an ad in the newspaper for a laptop that was being sold for $600 and not too far from where I live. It was a very nice Dell laptop, but dude, we're getting a Dell. Remember that? None of these kids. Oh god! I feel like everybody I knew that got Dells had to get replacements. I didn't, I, except mine, for you. Mine went. Or am I confusing it with another brand? No, my Dell lasted for forever. Mm. That was the first computer I ever owned. Yeah. Seem seeming odd that I was that it was being sold for a thousand dollars less than store price. A thousand dollars less. Well, that how, is a deal then. How much? How much is this? Uh, wait, being sold for six hundred dollars. So it would have been sixteen hundred dollars. That's a that in two thousand ten. That's a pretty pricey laptop. Yeah. I mean, that Am better be a fucking touch touch screen. But then again, I think my touch screen laptop at that time was two thousand. That's a touch screen laptop, and that was at a time when touch screen laptops were more expensive than yeah. relative to well, other ones. Well, like everybody in illustration had touch screens. And, and like I, it took me forever to get a touch screen and to convince my parents to get me one because. How much is this guy that we're reading this off of? That was the one that we got for a thousand because it was yeah. returned. Oh, that's right. So it was yeah. probably long, but still, this is. Like I don't a, know how much it was. This if is, we got a new one. This is a damn near top of the line. It's a fucking nice one. So yeah, that, that's a pretty pricey laptop. I, yeah, like the only downside to it is occasionally when I'm drawing, it'll just do a line straight down. But like you can always hit undo and then redo the line. So a lot of a lot of drugs references the day doing lines straight down. Yeah. Oh yeah, I guess that would be a drug. Drug. Drugs. The drugs. drugs. I drove to the seller's address the following day. The house was farther out of the city, budding up to a dense forest. Outside of the house was an old... Chevrolet. Chevrolet. Oh, my Lord. Chevrolet. (laughs) My brain blanked on how to pronounce that. And a mess of old signs and other various vintage-looking items. I rang the doorbell, and a thin man in a flannel jacket came out to the door. When I asked about the laptop, he almost looked relieved and told me he was ready to sell it immediately. Luckily, I came with cash in hand, and after proof of good condition, I went home with a new computer. Excited to have my first self-bought laptop, I powered it up and began unloading my pro- or uploading my programs and applications onto it. Upon searching the hard drive, I found a folder hidden away on it, which was odd because the man selling it told me that the memory was wiped clean and ready for a fresh start. That's that's a fun, peculiar thing. And I like that so far, the way that this story is written is it's mm. building up to to what's actually going to happen. I like that back in the day with creepypastas, there, whenever a new creepypasta dropped, it was like, oh, shit, new story. You know what I mean? It, it, you know, this time... 
after stories started migrating off 4chan, but before No Sleep took off, mm. anytime you got a story that was around this length where it takes about 10 minutes to read, it was like, oh, new, like, 10-minute story dropped. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so there wasn't this initial, like, I need to tell everyone what the plot is immediately in the first paragraph or they're going right. to get bored. Like, I like that it's just like, Hey, I'm, I mean, that that was before our attention spans got shortened. Though, true, so. also that. Uh, but there is also this element of like, oh, there's so many stories and this one's grabbing you immediately. Right. Even if it's a long story, it, it has to sink its teeth in immediately. And, and I'm a victim of that. I have to write my stories that way now, too, where it's like, hey, just so you know, there will be cool ghosts later. OK, I promise there is going to be ghosts and boobs and drugs and all the fun adult stuff. OK, please. <laughs> See, like, my problem is I like it when I don't know what I'm getting into. Same. And that's, that's why I've kind of stopped reading Creepypasta, actually, is because, like, I just, I don't like being, I, I like having to wait, like, three paragraphs to find out what the fuck I'm getting into and whether or not I should invest my time the rest of the way. If you can come up with, so, so you know, the old phrase, uh, brevity is the soul of wit, mm. uh, you know, Mr. Shakespeare's coming up with that great phrase. You get all of these stories where it's like telling you what the entire plot is from the beginning. And I know we've bemoaned this up and down, but if you can get someone's attention in a really novel way, right? Shortly, that's interesting, right? So the classic, but like if you can do it without revealing anything, yes. So we were tempted to read the egg, and I just wasn't in an egg mood. But that name immediately caught you. The story's just titled "An Egg." Right. That's a great. That's a great thing. I don't know what it's about. Am Every I? everybody listening to this does. It's amazing that you don't. I, you know what? I uh, I live under a rock, so uh, you live under a rock and below an egg. Yeah. <laughs> so this story <laughs> had the same has the same thing where it's just a date, and that's pretty that's pretty boring and upon itself. But when it's in the frame of like, oh, this is a creepy story, that's like, ooh, what? Why? Well, like, didn't Stephen King write like a book that was just a date and? That was about going back in time or some shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He also wrote a story. He He's great with titles because he wrote Pet Cemetery and Cemetery spelled wrong. Right. Spelled phonetically. And that gets your attention, too, of just like, what are you doing, Mr. King? Like, you want to know the story of why the title is that because that tells you that whoever's in the story probably spelled it wrong and you start theorizing. It gets you already thinking about the story, wanting to figure out what's going on with it. So you read it. Right. Same thing with Everything's Eventual, another short story, a short story that he wrote. Right. That's a great title. Everything's Eventual. That's a, you know, nowadays we have to title our stories everything, everywhere, all at once. Right. Back in the day, it was just. Well, like, I remember in middle school, I had to get, like, my parents to sign a permission script. 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 Permission slip. Slipped on that one. Um, In order to check out Stephen King novels from the school library. Hmm. And there was one just called Four Seasons. And I was just like, what the fuck is this about? I need to know. And then then from that point on, you were confused whenever you saw Four Seasons Hotel. And you're just like... Why Why is this named after the Stephen King novel? I don't understand. Chelsea has low intelligence. (laughs) I have intelligence in certain areas. And then other ones, I just, you know... With, with uh, phrases like Chevrolet. Yeah, Chevrolet. You, you can't... You can't. Which deal. I know is incorrect, but that's the way my mouth wants to shape it, so... <laughs> Outside of the house was... Sh- was a Chevrolet. Chevelle. <laughs> Chevelle. The band Chevelle, Chevelle was, was there. Chevelle was playing. Chevelle was there. It was actually Breaking Benjamin the whole it time. It was Breaking Benjamin. <laughs> <laughs> so we're at the hard drive, searching upon the um, hard drive. Yes, the folder was titled 91710, presumably a date. I opened the folder, revealing six photos, no, six videos and three pictures. Curiosity got the best of me, and I decided to watch the videos. So at this point, the only thing that's gone wrong is that this person got what was told that this thing was wiped. Because if you found, if you got a laptop mm. uh, secondhand and the person was just like, yeah, I got all my files off of it that I needed, but I haven't wiped it or whatever, it wouldn't be a big deal. But this person specified that they wiped it. Right. That is the only thing that's off about this story. You know, it's it's the f- slow descent. As, as, as a woman, my assumption would be that these are placed here purposefully and there are probably penises in here. Yeah. And I need to delete that, because I don't want to see that. 
you know, it, it depends because, you know, what if it's a nice penis? Uh, we, we also don't know the gender of our individual. We don't. If, if I saw I'm that. I'm just saying, like, personally, if this was, if, if I was in the place of the narrator, that would be my assumption. It would kind of depend on how creepy the, the guy was. Because this was just the skinny guy in a flannel jacket and he seemed above board. I wouldn't be too put off by that. I would just be like, well, is this like a, a thing that was automatically created because of, you know, just they opened up files and it, and it made them? Was mm-hmm. it this something put here by Windows where it auto-generated it? Right. So I would investigate. I, I wouldn't. I would just be like, okay, I'm assuming these are all just dicks. I'm assuming maybe he is a creep or maybe there's a creep living with him that he just doesn't know. Like maybe his son's a creeper and like put his penis in in the computer. And then you have, and, and then <laughs> you have, you know, anyway. Anyway, moving on. You have a lawsuit on your hands. The first video was simply titled 001. The video was shot from a shaky camcorder inside of a vehicle, recording a woman walking out of a bar and getting into her car at night. After a couple of seconds, the woman drove off and immediately the person recording the video began driving after her. Ooh, okay. Yeah, I didn't think about that possibility of just, it is crimes and you should probably turn your laptop into the police? Police. You should probably turn it into the FBI. And if the FBI doesn't accept it, maybe you should turn it into the news or some sort of individual that would want to investigate the laptop and oh. see what kind of illegal materials are on the laptop. There we go. There, There's there's the route to go down. That's, that's an interesting idea. Hmm. Oh, but what about the laptop's chain of custody? The proper authorities wouldn't take it. I don't know. Seems like there's a lot of crimes on this fucking laptop, my guy. The, the video ended after 24 seconds. It almost seemed like the cameraman had been waiting for the woman for a while. Oh, no. Come to think of it, I wasn't too alarmed by this at the time. Just a little unsettled. I opened the next video titled 002. I would be unsettled because that tells me that either they're a private investigator or they're a stalker. Yeah, like I would immediately jump to stalker and be like, oh, shit, this is no bueno. <laughs> If a person just like happened to be like testing out a camera and somebody was walking by, that would be different. And if it's titled like 001, you would think like, oh, maybe they were messing around with a, a recorder and they just wanted to see what the video quality was. Right. But if you follow, if you're following the person, that tells me stalker, investigator, there's no other option. Right. Alternatively, if you want to try to find like a, um, a non-creepy answer, could be somebody trying to surprise a friend. Maybe, yeah, maybe. Which is not where I would go to immediately, because like I will jump to the worst assumption. It was. Was it raining? Was it like creepy out? Um, let's see here. Was there moon? It was nighttime. It was so nighttime. Automatically creepy. Automatically creepy. Uh, unless, unless it's like they just, the the next video opens up and the person just uh, run it like turns the camera around their face. <laughs> I'm. I'm Jason, and this is the uh, nut punch. And he just runs up and just punches, <laughs> punches the woman in the taint. Oh no! Punch your nuts. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh no! I assume that this was the next part of the first video. My assumption was right, as it began with a cameraman camera on top of the console. So, like the console of the car, the the, the dashboard. Yes. Area. Yes. Uh, facing out of the windshield. It was raining now, leading me to believe that this was a short while after the first video ended. I could barely make out that the vehicle two cars ahead of this this one was the same car that the woman left the bar in. I went for an unsettling... It went yes. for... This went... This went on for an unsettling 47 seconds before the camera cut out. I began to get a little nervous, fearing that this might take a turn for the worse. I would need to turn this in uh, if there's any more evidence on here. If it's like this, I'm just going to... If, if I keep going and there's nothing else, I delete this, delete it from my mind, whatever. Mm. If there's another video, I kind of like... Mm, if there's anything else. I mean, the question at that point is, do you have a clear image of the woman? Like, do you have a clear visual of her face? Because if you watch another one and it's super, super creepy, then you, like, reverse image search a photo of her face just to see if she's okay, see if she's missing, like, see if she has any Facebook posts. Did, did those reverse image searches, were they as powerful back then as they are now? Oh, that's a good point. 
But I, I would, didn't think about that. You also have to question, do you have enough evidence? Right. And you might not. If, if it is blurry face it, or you don't get a face at all, then it's like, uh, there might possibly be a crime committed. And at that point, you don't even have proof. Maybe right. the person is just like not a stalker in the dangerous sense. They could get the health of your stalker. They could be a stalker in the boring sense of like, uh, I'm going to like watch them walk away because I have an obsession with them, but I wouldn't hurt them. Right. You know, you don't even technically have a crime there. You just have a weirdo. Yeah. Hmm. A weirdo that that woman should probably do something about. You know, the question is how, how this, this gets even more disturbing. What if they didn't uh, plan on doing anything and they've just been doing it for years and the woman doesn't even know? God, don't say those kinds of things to me. That's horrifying. Isn't that horrifying? That's fucking horrifying. Like a, a new, that, so that's, that in upon itself is just like, hey, you're not in danger like you think. You've been in, you've been being stalked the entire you're time. You're just getting Hemingwayed. Yeah. <laughs> that's one way to put it. Uh, let's see here. But. As if I was watching a television show, I wanted to see where this was headed. Not totally concerned yet. I think this is a guy, because, like, mm. you know, mm-hmm. I feel like most guys are not, like, their hackles don't immediately get raised by situations like this. Whereas I feel like a lot of women have a tendency to just mm. just be like, okay, my hackles are kind of raised. I, I don't know, because if, <sighs> I, I, I don't know. I, I don't think that that's true, because if you're a guy and you kind of have... A, a little bit of white knight in you, you your heckles will get raised. Like I'm, I'm not a super protective person, but I do. You know, if I'm out at a bar, and even if I'm like super drunk, it's like uh, you know, I'm keeping an eye on this guy in the corner to make sure because I don't know if he's going to take no for an answer for you know this kind of reason. And mm-hmm. you know, most of the bars we go to have good bouncers where if you're like, hey. Yeah, look either, at this. Either good bouncers or fantastic bartenders. Or fantastic, yeah. That's that's kind of the thing at our favorite bar that I won't say the name of that we go to. Yeah, like the bartenders there are not going to tolerate that shit, and they're keeping oh, no. their eyes on. And they're also pretty buff. Even the chicks are super. Yeah, they're all ready for a fight. Mm-hmm. Um, not totally concerned yet. I decided to press on. The third video was, of course, titled 003. This was the one that got me officially concerned. The clip began from the same shaky hands as the first clip. Officially concerned here for I'm going to do some shit about this. <laughs> it was now pouring rain outside of the car, and I could barely make out a figure in a fur coat with an umbrella walking in front of a door to a house. I could only assume who this person was and whose house this belonged to. The figure entered the house and closed the door. Holy shit. We're getting, we're getting a twist. Even more opportunities. This person is not a stalker. They're not a private investigator. They're a vigilante, and that bitch is Cruella de Vil. <laughs> I was thinking also potentially twist. This is the husband, and that's the wife, and this is just what they're into. There's a, Yeah, there's also <laughs> that. This is, this is getting into the legal quandaries you have here of, like, sh- do you need to turn this into the police? Are you wasting their time? It, are there other explanations here? Because, like, the right. ones that I'm saying off the top of my head, it seems like the more we go, the story has given me a few different options and you know, interpretations. There are a few different pathways here. Yeah. You know? The following stillness greatly unnerved me. The only thing that could be heard was the sound of rain dumping on top of the car. Yeah, nice I'm, mood setting. I'm sorry, that just that, that phrasing just kind of, like, internally cracks me up. Rain dumper. <laughs> 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 That's exactly what my brain is saying. Uh, after roughly two minutes of this nerve-wracking nothingness, the, vid- the lights inside of the house cut out. Another minute or so went by before the camera was placed onto the console again, and the sound of a person exiting the car broke the stillness. After the car door quietly closed, another figure, this time hooded, could be seen walking towards the house. I began to feel a knot tightening in the bottom of my stomach as the stranger walked around the back of the house. Whoever this was, they definitely weren't supposed to be there. After another couple of seconds, the lights to the outside of the house cut out. It was pitch black, and the only rain and only the rain alerted me that the camera was still rolling. The video ended at about nine minutes of rain and darkness. See, this is the point where it's like, okay, I need to call my cousins, because they might believe in the rapture, but they would also beat the shit out of this person. 
So I'm trying to remember. I know that there was another story that was just a date that was very similar and had a laptop. Mm. And I, I think that there might have been two. I think that this might have been the significantly better one. I might have been misremembering uh, <laughs> this one because I, I remember that there was one that was much more akin to Barbie.avi. Okay. And this is this has kind of given me all of those vibes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Of yeah. like uncovering a mystery, something kind of being wrong, but not like oh, do I want to intervene or the cops or how does this, you know, th that kind of vibe. Right. I was pretty sure now that this, that this was not an innocent project or anything of that nature. I began to feel stupid for not checking this laptop seller's credibility. Was this person stalking the same woman that I met um, with earlier? Was this person stalking the woman, the same person that I met okay. with earlier? Yes, much better. So... I would say I wouldn't be mad at myself for not checking their credibility. I would be happy that I was in that situation to, like, possibly do something about it. You know what I mean? Right, because this, this could be, like, a, a case that's a cold case that's still stuck open that they're just waiting for evidence for. It could... I. There are a lot of different things this could be. A cold case? I better interject myself because I'm a, a true crime nerd. <laughs> Me, I'll be the one to solve this fucking internet mystery. No, I'll be the one to heat this at the police and say, get this away from me. <laughs> uh, throughout the whole experience, I had a dormant thought that uh, in the back of my head that to call the police, but I wasn't re ready just yet. Reluctantly, now I began the fourth video, 004. It was dark again, but the rain had stopped and I was left with only silence. Not long after the clip began, I could make out the sound of footsteps on gravel, getting louder as someone was approaching the vehicle. The car door had uh, the car door opened and the dome light was turned on. I could tell that the camera was now on the floor of the car, pointing up towards the roof. The I heard sounds fumbling in the background, and suddenly a thump sounded from the back of the truck. An arm abruptly obstructed the camera's view, and a large tarp could be seen being pulled out from the car. I had only one scenario running through my head, and I hope that it wasn't true. That's revealing uh, a lot of information there. Yeah. The person picked up the camera and put it back on the console and began to back up. They drove for a good three minutes before parking in a branched-off road and exiting the car to work on the load they were carrying. Six minutes after, the car was moved again to a different location, and the camera was picked up and carried underhanded away from the car. I could see now that it was the same shit bucket truck that was in front of the seller's house. Ooh. Mm -hmm. I was about ready to call the cops on this creep when the camera turned toward the house. It was a completely different house than the one I had visited. I was a little relieved. Relieved, relieved by this, though it didn't prove anything. Ooh, do you think it's their house? Do you think this is like a live thing happening? It's a, uh, it's interesting. Oh, a live thing? I don't know. Maybe. Uh, it I seems could like, see that being a possible twist for this. Uh, 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 maybe. So I, I do like that they have these details being revealed, and we're just trying to piece it together. So it, it kind of implies that maybe there's two villains involved. You know, if we're going to different houses and tarps and blah, blah, blah. So Right, somebody stalking them, mm -hmm. and then, like, same truck being used that was outside the house. It does... Any reason why a person would document their crimes automatically kind of makes them more heinous. Like, if it was, like... Well, I mean, it's like serial killers wanting trophies and all that it, yeah, terrifying it's, stuff. It, it makes it clear that this is not a one-off thing either. You know what I mean? That mm. it's not like there's just this target. It makes it seem like this is a serial killer. Yeah. As the fourth video came to an end, I was wondering whether or not I was prepared to see what came next. I could only hope that this was a prank or at least a had a happy ending. 005 began inside the house. It was extremely dark, and the only thing I could make out was a figure that would occasionally walk in front of the camera. It was also quiet for the first few moments, minus the occasional barking of an outside dog. A dog outside. It, it could be an inside dog or an outside dog, but the dog, inside or outside, was outside. Yes. 
<laughs> Precisely. The question is, what kind of dog was it based off of this description? <laughs> <laughs> Math test, go! <laughs> Eventually, a small sound started to appear. The small sound soon as... Small sound here. Small sound here. <laughs> Do you like small sounds and tiny spaces? Small sounds, ASMR YouTube channel. Little <laughs> 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 <Out of> kissy. <laughs> I think we finally found a reason for this voice. <laughs> we've, been, we've been sitting on this voice forever, and now we know that there are little small voice ASMR channel. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> oh boy <laughs> Small sounds Small sounds for your ears Small sounds for going to your ears <laughs> Oh, it's not a good. <laughs> like it's for your dum dum. <laughs> you need to do a of that's our video for the channel. Oh, my, oh, my lord. That would be funny as hell. I'm glad we finally have a fucking name for this voice and we can make their an ASMR channel. Yay! <laughs> Chelsea, there were small sounds. Yeah, they they were tiny. Tiny, absolutely minuscule, <laughs> minute even minute perhaps. <laughs> the small sound soon escalated to a loud, muffled scream. <laughs> oh my god! Don't do that. <laughs> I don't want to get back into laughing until my tummy hurts again. <laughs> Your tummy is. Str shaking and struggling. <laughs> now, Chelsea, read the story. Quit getting distracted. You know that you're so distracting. <laughs> uh, the distractor. <laughs> shaking and struggling sounds became more apparent as time went on, as well as crying. A light abruptly came on, and the camera was lifted and panned to the center of the room, revealing a beaten and bloody woman tied to a chair. Now that is quite the reveal, but it does make me want to make a, uh, a grunge album called Shaking and Struggling Sounds. No, no, have it be like one of those like 50s bops. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, the, the song at the end of Clue? Shake, rattle, yeah. and roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Struggle against the binds. <laughs> Struggle. Yep. So she's beaten in a tied up chair in a center of a room. Which does not bode well. Is this the point that you turn this laptop in? Oh no. I, come yeah. on. We're we're beyond the this has gotta go to the proper authorities. Yeah, yeah, because the police might lose it. This might yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you also upload the video to snuff websites and charge a fee for it. I mean, you know, that's that's thinking with, with money right mm -hmm. there. <laughs> that's what you do if you're a scumbag, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I guess so. Let's see here. From what I could make out, this was, in fact, the woman from the bar. The camera zoomed in on her face for what seemed like an eternity before stopping. See, there you go. Now you got a face pic that you can try and... Her face might be very Chris Browned by that point. Uh, the camera zoomed in on her face for what seemed like an eternity before stopping. I couldn't believe that this was happening. The original hope that this was a movie or something like that had long since diminished. The only one video remaining. Oh, with only one video remaining, I was beginning to fear for my own safety. I locked my door. What? Why the fuck did you not lock your door before? Who does not immediately lock their door? Men. Does it? So, so, you know, we were talking about... Would people's um, heckles be on end if they're a man or a woman, if the victim is a woman? Yes, they're, they would have more of, of an empathy towards women, but probably not towards themselves. Mm. You know what I mean? That or, like, they just don't think about it. Because, like, I don't I feel like if you live in a, like, 
very safe area, you tend to not think about locking your door. No, yeah. Or, like, if you live in the middle of, like, the country, you tend to not think about locking your door because, like, what if one of your neighbors ends up locked out of their house and they need to come over while you're out? Like, I could see that. Um, But, like, if you're living in an apartment, Mm -hmm. why are you not immediately locking your door? (laughs) It's true, yeah. An apartment is a very different situation. Although they could be in a house. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, maybe they have an acre of land. I don't know. It's hard. It's maybe hard they're, to like, tell. in one of those, like, l- between areas where it's, like, you have, like, an acre or two to yourself, but you still have, like, really close neighbors. We don't know about uh, Chico State University's topography. Yeah. <laughs> in, I mean, like, are they living situation. in a sorority house, a fraternity house? Although I feel like you'd lock your door in those, too, because, like, you wouldn't want, like, your drunken yeah, yeah. sisters or brothers stumbling in. Mm-hmm. Anyway, back to the story. Um, Um, Where were we at? The original hope that this was a movie or something like that had long since diminished. With only one video remaining, I was beginning to fear for my own safety. I locked my door, closed my blinds, and pushed forward. (laughs) Who opens their blinds? This is the. This the, is not a goblin person. The worst title for a porno ever. <laughs> I locked my doors, closed my blinds, and pushed forward. <laughs> oh no! I began 006 with a small hope that this woman was still alive and that I could have saved her. The final installment of this horror show began in a bathroom setting. Oh no! Oh, don't oh, that. no! Uh, the camera was placed on the counter facing a mirror in which I could see a door. The only sound I could make was a familiar sound that destroyed my hopes. Power tools. I sat in front of... I sat in chair. I sat in chair. I I sat in front of the screen for what seemed like hours before the sound stopped. More silence. Then heavy footsteps accompanied by what sounded like something being dragged. The doorknob turned and the door was pushed open. Out of the darkness of the rest of the house appeared a middle-aged woman dressed in what can only be described as lab attire, sporting a respirator and a pair of long rubber gloves. This, for some strange reason, gave me a small amount of relief. In the flexion, the woman struggled to drag something to the bathtub. A sm- she, as she hoisted it into the tub, I could see that it was a large black garbage bag. My my mind was hoping that would say a large black like retriever, <laughs> <laughs> just a live retriever, just being like, drag me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not moving my legs. <laughs> I will not hop in the bathtub. <laughs> I don't want to do it. <laughs> I felt like I was dreaming. It was like I was watching a horror movie unfolding on the screen. She lifted the bag up from the tub, now empty except for whatever entrails that still dropped out. She picked up the camera and placed it on the ground, facing the tub. On the floor, in front of the bathtub, was an assortment of corrosive substances and several other empty containers. The woman began to dump the liquids into the tub, which was followed by an awful, awful noise that I can only describe as pop rocks mixed with coke. The video ended, and I was left bewildered and panicked. I finally bewildered and panicked, yeah. I finally opened the pictures. The first one was of the truck. The second picture was of the girl typed up before she was beaten. And the third picture brought up a corrupted file notice, but maybe that's a good thing. I mean, so, oh. so, so right here we have a picture of the woman tied up, and that's a cool picture that they fabricated. Right. It's a, it's a white woman tied up in a chair with a black dress on. and uh, Probably but, a see-through undershirt. Yeah, kind of like a see-through. The, yeah. Underneath the dress. Yeah, that's your that, that's the um, slutty goth uh, dress that you take to prom. Right, exactly. To let people know that you're a hot goth girl, goth girl that's hot to trot. Or alternatively, you're a hot goth girl that wants to be hot for yourself. Yeah. I want to check myself out in the mirror. True. I don't care about any of the rest of you. If you admire me too, that's great. But you know what? I want to look at myself. I want to look at my own tits. I, I want to look, look at my, my own, own tits. tits. <laughs> I managed to keep the two photos... I must, I must, I must (laughs) increase my bust. I managed to keep the two pictures before I handed the laptop over to the police. 
I was reimbursed my $600 along with a bonus. Apparently, the victim was the young girlfriend of the older woman's ex-husband. Ooh. The older woman was arrested almost a year before, but was freed of all charges due to a lack of evidence. And the ex-husband was incarcerated instead. I guess this was the missing link. I hope this has solved any unanswered questions, although I'm not sure who the man in the flannel jacket was or how he got a hold of the laptop or how he owns the same truck as the murderer. I guess I'll leave that up to the police. Maybe it's the woman? Hmm. You know, who's just dressing like a guy? Perhaps. Like, if her husband has been arrested, I don't know. That would be my assumption. Regardless, this was... Or maybe it's like the brother of the woman? I don't know. This was much better than I remembered. Cause I think I was confusing it with one that had like three different entries, but it was like a similar setup of finding evidence of a crime on a laptop. Hmm. But it, it kind of like trickled off and kind of got unfocused. This one really did have a lot of twists and turns. It, it kept you going throughout it, trying to figure stuff out. It, that was way more entertaining than I thought. Yeah. That was good. I enjoyed that. Written by Bong Water Snowman. Yeah, that's a great name. That is an excellent name. And you know, we don't we don't get these kinds of uh, things anymore where it's like a creepypasta with like one or two associated images. It's, you know, that art form has died out, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, that was very fun. Do you have uh, any other thoughts about it? No, that was good. I, I enjoyed that. And that was a good time. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts or? Uh, nope. Nope. Brain empty, only applesauce? Yeah, bra- I put, ooh, so we should make some candy cakes. <gasps> yes. We should make some, so we should get some uh, maple syrup, like cinnamon, o- cinnamon uh, oats for breakfast. Mm. Uh, and then you put uh, so- some, uh. It, oh my god, what was it? Uh, whiskey? Crown Royal. Crown oh, Royal. It was Crown Royal. No, um, yeah, Crown Royal whiskey. Okay. Yeah, and you put that in there, and then you have your candy cake. Seth and I made them one time. Yeah, weren't they, like, explosively Absol- horrible? Explosively horrible. <laughs> uh, they would not soak. You couldn't get it to, like, merge at all, so all of your liquor went down to the bottom of the thing. It was just a cup of fucking oats. You're, you're eating, trying... <laughs> Because the oats absorbed it so well, but down at the bottom, so you're like trying to get into the oats right. to get to the bottom nuggets of drunkenness. And of nummies. Is, is it just inefficient? You just had a, we just ended up doing shots of Crown Royal, which is not fun. No, Crown <laughs> Royal isn't tasty. No, it's not. It's not really. That, that was such a weird fascination for the longest time because that, that was kind of like the first um, higher end a party drink for for a lot of people. I remember back when we lived in our first house, um, and we had like everybody this... got that Crown Royal story. Well, like no, like we I I we lived there until I was like nine, and like my parents did the basement up to be like a bar pool area, hmm. um, so that they wouldn't have to go out. And like the thought process of was you know we'll invite our friends and we'll like get really drunk and we'll be able to play pool in the basement. Forgetting that they didn't have friends. Um, <laughs> Ooh, <it's> brutal. <laughs> it's true. Um, but, like, they did this crazy, vibrant, hideous orange shag carpet. Mm-hmm. And, like, everything else was black. Like, the ceiling was painted black. The walls were black. All of the, like, the bar was black. Like, it was I want surreal. to invite people to my bar in painted black. <laughs> But my dad, like, for some reason, like, just stocked it with Crown Royal, and it made my mom so mad. And then, like, before they could get into a fight, Raven screamed because there was a mouse. Mm. And that's, like, all I remember is my dad, like, freaking the fuck out because Raven was screaming. And then it turned out she was screaming because there was a mouse. And then we had to figure out how to get the mouse outside, so... And then the mouse drank some Crown Royal, and he was just like... And then ah. that's how 12 Ounce Mouse came to be. That's... that's... <laughs> <laughs> Are you drunk? Not drunk enough. <laughs> good, I got a job for you. <laughs> oh, 12 Ounce Mouse is so good. This has been uh, the Fear yeah. Fiction yeah. Podcast. Today's hosts were C.F. Comer and Dead Palette. Art by C.F. Comer. Music by Abysme. Edited by Elias the Intern. Subscribe to Fear Fic 
to stay up to date on new episodes and like to let the world know we exist. Be sure to check out youtube.com backslash creepypasta for original creepypasta narrations. James Hector, Bone Collector, back with my product that has revolutionized home defense in a way that I didn't expect. I didn't consider the way that the Bone Collector 1999, a gun-like device that yanks bones clean out of anything that you point it at that has bones, might have a military application, but this is the kind of cross-cultural reference I can give behind. Bone Conda forever. When I started my journey in bone collecting, I wanted to cut the crap with all of the butcher industrial complex and everything that they put us through, giving us the meat and keeping the juicy, juicy, delicious, erotic animal bones for themselves. But now, a private military corporation would rather stay anonymous has given an order of 5,000 Bone Collector 1999s to be custom made for them and we're passing on the military grade technology to you the consumer the new and improved bone collector 1999 2 is out now and comes with a lifetime ending warning on its box telling you explicitly not to let children touch the Bone Collector 1999 2 and also the same with the Bone Collector 1999 original um, out there in the hands of families across the nation been very successful um, that warning was always there you probably didn't see it uh, on the box before you threw the box away and if you still have your box send it back to us we'll upgrade you to a bone collector 1999 2 by charging the return address with absolutely no service charge that's the james hector bone collector boner of a deal promise so let's see what this bad boy can do on this cow dispensing all of its unwanted low quality liquid calcium in the form of milk let us get to the good stuff oh my oh huh I can't I can't believe cows have that much poop and meat inside of them um, here, cow bones. Mm. Thanks. Thanks, Bessie. If you like those results, check. Visit www.camifan.com and order your Bone Collector 1992 today. Oh. <sighs>